<clears throat> okay. All right. So, uh, Alexander and Sri. So let's start with our <clears throat> statistics discussion. So we have started. We were doing this chapter, measure of dispersion, and until this point, we have <clears throat> discussed few things in the chapter. Like uh, we have discussed the meaning of dispersion, wherein I have told you that dispersion is basically variation of items in a statistical series. Then after that, I have told you. what are the different measures of dispersion what are the different types of dispersion so on the basis of measure of dispersion we can categorize dispersion into two different parts one is called the absolute measure of dispersion then we have relative measure of dispersion so <clears throat> there are two measure of dispersion after that we have discussed various method by which dispersion can be calculated so in this we have discussed we have already talked about the meaning of range and how do we calculate range what is coefficient of range and how it is calculated in different types of series and then in the last session we were talking about i think we were talking about quartile deviation right and in the quartile deviation i think we have done question based on the individual series as well as on the discrete series right and <clears throat> Let the uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Alexander. Can you please confirm what topic we have discussed in the in this particular chapter in the last session? <clears throat> Sir, we um, we discussed one second. Uh, we discussed the uh the continuous series you know in case of continuous series in case of continuous series how do we calculate quartile deviation we have done that no not that like so no uh, tell me tell me uh on which type of series we have done the quartile deviation uh, no i meant <clears throat> individual series i'm sorry so we, only we also did. okay so we have done question based on only individual series yeah and also discrete series Okay, so we have discussed individual and discrete, uh, and I think I gave you homework for uh, quartile deviation as well. Yes. So, did you completed this that question, and do you have any uh, doubt regarding that? You gave me <laughs> two questions. The first one I got it wrong. The second one I got it correct. Okay, so first one you got it wrong. So you want me to do that question? Or... Uh, yeah. in the first question you have a doubt basically in case of individual series uh yeah in case of i, I yeah i got it wrong you got it wrong okay so let's do this question then only we will start with our continuous series okay okay so i i am i think that you must have uh, committed mistake because uh, you haven't arranged the series in the arrange uh, in the ascending order so have you before yeah. attempting question have you uh, uh, arranged the series in the ascending order no <clears throat> no so make sure that whenever you calculate quartile because quartile is based on terms right fifth term sixth term seventh term and terms will differ if you do not arrange this arrange the series so before attempting any series you need to before attempting any series any before calculating any series uh, sorry before calculating quartile deviation in any series in fact before calculating quartile deviation in case of individual series make sure you always arrange the series in the ascending order or you can also arrange it in the descending order, order it won't make any difference but you have to make it in order you have to arrange it in order either in the ascending or the descending all right alexander so i would recommend that you try it one more time after us uh, arranging it in ascending order then if you still didn't got the answer if you don't go get the answer then i'll i'll solve it for you <clears throat> clear is that yeah it's clear okay so you have to arrange the series in the order like uh, 
then we have the larger value than 15 is 24 sorry 15 18 20 24 then 27 28 and 30 this is how it, it should be arranged and then you will calculate q1 and q3 and after that you will apply quartile deviation formula okay so as the individual series and discrete series are, is already clear and we have done question based on that so now we will discuss continuous series how to calculate quartile deviation in case of continuous series okay in case of continuous series <clears throat> In case of continuous series, in case of continuous series, we need to calculate quartile deviation. So, first of all, let me write down the question for you. Find Quartile deviation <clears throat> and its coefficient in following data. So we have the continuous series given. So as you already know that in case of continuous series, we have the data given in the format of class. So here we have data in this format 20 to 40, then 40 to 40 to 60, then 60 to 80, 80 to 100, 100 to 120, and 120 to 140. These are the class of data given to you. Then we have frequency as well. Frequency is 9, 3, 6, 2, 5, and 7. <clears throat> okay, so this is the question, Alexander and Steve. We need to calculate quartile deviation in this question. So to calculate quartile deviation, what do what we will do? First of all, we will write down the question in the vertical format. So just write all the data in the vertical format. <clears throat> 20 to 40, 60 to 80, 100 to 60 to 80, 80 to 100, okay, and 100 to 120, then 120 to 140. These are the classes we have in the question given. And also, we have been provided with the frequency. So we will write down the frequency as well, 9, 3, 6, 2, five and seven okay so this is the frequency okay once we are done with with the question with the writing of the values we will now write down the formula to calculate quartile deviation so formula to calculate quartile deviation in case of continuous series is quartile deviation. The formula remains same. We will have the same formula Q3 minus Q1 divided by two. And we need to calculate coefficient as well. So for calculating coefficient, same formula will be applicable. Coefficient of quartile deviation. <clears throat> coefficient of quartile deviation. The formula for coefficient of quartile deviation will be 
q3 minus q1 divided by q3 plus q1 right okay so now according to formula we require in order to calculate quartile deviation we, we need to calculate q1 and q3 right so for calculating q1 and q3 in case of continuous series we will have to prepare we will have to make a working note and this is going to be little <coughs> difficult alexander so i want you to give full attention otherwise you won't be able to understand it will be comparatively difficult in this case calculation of quartile is a little different as we used to do in individual and discrete series so we will have to make a working note why are we making working note because we need to calculate lower quartile and upper quartile so first of all we will calculate lower quartile lower quartile basically means q1 so we will calculate q1 <clears throat> so for calculating q1 now this is very very important and try to pay attention here in case of continuous series to calculate q1 we have to follow two steps first step in order to calculate lower quartile the first step will be step 1 will be to calculate quartile size we will first calculate quartile size <coughs> okay and what is the quart how do we calculate quartile size so the so the formula for calculating quartile size is pretty simple in fact it is very easy so formula is very simple n upon fourth term this is the formula to calculate quartile size once we are done with the calculation of quartile size after applying this formula we will be calculating value of quartile size then once we are well, once we got the value of quartile size then we will apply the second step and second step is finally to calculate the quartile value this formula by applying this formula we will be able to calculate quartile value or in fact you can say the quartile term so for calculating the exact quartile term we will have to apply this formula L one plus n upon four minus cumulative frequency upon f into class interval i. Okay, so the this is the formula for calculating Q one. So let's start. First of all, we will have to calculate quartile size. For but before applying this formula, we will have to calculate cumulative frequency as i think i have already told you in the last session that whenever we need to calculate quartile and if there is frequency given in the question so first the first thing that we will be doing is to calculate cumulative frequency so we will be calculating cumulative frequency now so cumulative frequency in this case will be 9 plus 3 it will be 12 then 6 18 then 7 20 Then, <clears throat> then five twenty-five, then seven, so thirty-two. All right, is this clear, Alexander? Any doubt? Yes, so clear. And I think I have already told you in the last session this thing too that last value of the cumulative frequency indicate the total number of items. So this indicate n total number of items. so this shows that we have total 32 items in the series so now we can apply quartile quartile size formula so it will be 32 divided by 4 right so 32 divided by 4 it will be how much tell me eighth term correct it will be eighth term <coughs> alexander is this clear yes sir okay now we will to in order to find the eighth term we will go to the cumulative frequency column and now we will find out eight so tell me tell me eight will fall after nine or before nine eight will fall after nine or before nine before before nine correct so we will take this value as the cumulative frequency 
that means eight will fall into this category. It eight will definitely not fall after nine. It will be within the nine. So we will be taking nine as the commutative frequency and the class in front of this commutative frequency will be our relevant class. This will be our quartile class or the quartile size. So quartile size we have got is 20 to 40. This is our quartile class. We haven't yet calculated the quartile value. We have just calculated quartile class. Is that clear until this point? Any doubt, Alexander? <clears throat> no doubt. No doubt. Now, now the important part comes into picture. In the quartile class, pay attention. In the quartile class, the first item of the quartile class is called L1. L1. <coughs> Just a minute. L1 and the cumulative frequency just in front of the quartile class is called F. This is our F. And cumulative frequency just above this frequency will be considered as CF. Since there is no value above this frequency, so cumulative frequency will be taken as zero. Getting my point? Let's suppose, let's suppose, let's suppose for the time being that. If quartile class would have been 40 to 60, just assume that quartile class was 40 to 60. So L1 would have been 40 and just in front of this class, the frequency that we have got will be our F and commutative frequency in that case would be nine. This will be, this, this would have been our CF, but, but by chance we have got commutative frequency, uh, sorry. Quartile class is 40, 20 to 40, right? And in the 20 to 40, L1 will be 20, 9 will be our frequency, and commutative frequency just above this frequency will be our CF. Since there is no item prior to this value, so we will consider CF as 0. All right, is this clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, Taking these values values into consideration, we will apply all these in, into this formula. So formula we have is L1 plus n by 2 minus CF upon F. So see L1 in place of L1, we can write down 20. For n upon 4, we have already calculated n by 4 is 8. n by 4 is how much? It is 8. So in place of n by 4, we can write down 8. And for commutative frequency, we have got commutative frequency as zero. So this will be zero and and frequency is nine. And interval is how much, how much is the gap between the items? How much is the gap between the class? Sorry. How much is the gap between class? Alexander, how much is the gap between class? 20. Each class, we have a gap of 20. So this will be our I 20 will be I. <coughs> okay. Now calculate the value, quartile value. Quartile value will be how much? 20 plus 8 into 8 minus 0, 8. 8 into 20 will be 160 upon 9. So 160 divided by nine will be how much? 160 divided by nine. So it will be 17.77. Then we will add 17.77 into uh, plus 20. So it will be 37.77. 37.77. This is our quartile one. Tell me, Alexander, is this clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Now we will do the same thing with the for calculating quartile upper quartile. For upper quartile as well, we will have to make a working note. 
for upper quartile that is q3 for q3 we will apply this formula first of all the first step for calculating upper quartile will be calculation of quartile size or you can say quartile class quartile size or quartile class you can say <clears throat> so for quartile class we have this formula and upon fourth term right but since you are calculating quartile class for the third quartile therefore you will instead of writing n by fourth term you will be writing 3 n upon fourth term is that clear alexander and still yes. now so as we know there are how many items 32 items so we will in place of n we will write 32 divided by 4 term and as we know after calculating 32 by 4 we are going to get 8 so we will simply multiply 8 into 3 we will get 24th term any doubts till this point no doubts now we will we will try to find out 24 in the cumulative frequency so we will go to the cumulative frequency column and we will try to find cf 24 so tell me 24 will fall after 9 answer is yes 24 will fall after 12 answer is yes 24 will fall after 18 answer is yes 24 will fall after 20 answer is yes 24 will fall after 25 answer is no so that's this means that 24 will fall within 25 so class just in front of this cumulative frequency will be considered as our relevant class this will be our relevant class for quartile calculation right and if this is the class so the first item of this class will be considered as our l1 and the frequency just in front of this class will be our f and cumulative frequency just above this class will be our cf this will be our cf what it everybody alexander is this clear yes sir <clears throat> so quartile class is 100 to 120 this we have got by applying the formula and if we have got quartile class as 100 to 20 now we can simply apply step 2 step 2 is what calculation of quartile value so step 2 is for quartile value quartile value will be how do we calculate quartile value it will be sir it will be the formula for it it will be l1 plus instead of n by 4 we will this time we will write 3n upon 4 minus cf upon f into interval formula is same in, in fact the only change is this 3n upon 4 in, in place of n by 4 we will be writing 3n by 4 everything will remain same now now in place of l1 we can write down 100 right 100 plus 3n by 4 we have got 24 right minus cumulative frequency cumulative frequency is how much we have got we have got cumulative frequency as 20 20 so we will write down 20 and frequency we have got is 5 and class interval is as we know 20 now we will simply calculate this equation and find out the upper quartile value so it will be 100 plus 24 minus 20 it will be 4 4 into 20 80 we will have to divide 80 by 5 so after dividing 80 by 5 we will get 100 plus uh, 16 so your answer will be 116 this will be your upper quartile tell me alexander is this clear steve is this clear any doubts clear clear so now as you have got q1 and q3 now we can simply apply these value into the formula and calculate the quartile deviation so quartile q3 is we have got q3 
116 and uh, q1 we have got 37.77 we will apply this into the formula <clears throat> Hundred and sixteen minus seventy. How much it was? Seven thirty-seven point seven seven. Sorry, thirty-seven point seven seven. Then we will divide it by two. So the whatever the value that we will be getting, this will be our quartile deviation, right? So we will reduce hundred and sixteen minus. Three seven point seven, three seven point seven seven. So seventy eight point two two divided by two. Answer is thirty nine point one one. Thirty nine point one one. Right. And for calculating coefficient of quartile deviation, <coughs> we will apply this formula. Hundred and sixteen minus thirty-seven point seven seven, then divided by hundred and sixteen plus thirty-seven point seven seven, and this time the answer will be whatever the answer it will be our coefficient of quartile deviation, right? Alexander, any doubts? No doubt. No doubt. Perfect. Very good. So, you have written it down, or you are still writing it? Sir, I am writing. You are writing. So, you want me to show any specific part of the solution? Um. Just let me know when when you want me to show any specific part of the solution. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Sir, mm -hmm. can I see uh, the lower quartile working? Lower quartile or upper quartile? L lower. Yeah. Okay. Lower quartile. <clears throat> Sir, done. Done. You need. Uh, you you want me to show the uh, calculation of upper quartile as well? 
Uh, no, I wrote that. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So, uh, Alexander, I'm giving you one question, and and I want you to solve this question right now. So, kindly solve question number three. Are you able to see this question on screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So we have ages given in the, uh, basically in the continuous series format, and number of person. The number of person will be our frequency, and ages will be our class intervals. So solve it. We have uh, also answers given in the question. I want you to solve this question within. Just try. Try to solve this within ten minutes. <clears throat> Let me know if you are having any problem solving it. Okay. So I'm think I'm expecting basically that you will solve it. Okay.
Dan Alexander, you still solving it? Yeah, I'm solving. Okay.
Sir, I think I got it wrong. Got it wrong? Yeah, uh, I'm how, get... how much you are getting value? QD, I'm getting 17.4. QD is 17.4. Yeah. And here we got 14.3. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so first of all, tell me the value of the cumulative frequencies. Four, four. fourteen, mm -hmm. twenty-nine, mm -hmm. forty-nine, mm -hmm. sixty. Correct. Then you have applied the formula for Q one, and yes. Q one will be sixty upon uh, the quartile size. We have to calculate first. So uh, sixty upon four. Yeah. So sixty upon four will be fifteen. Yeah. Right. So fifteen will fall into twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. Correct. So for in that case. Our, our class will be 40 to 60. Yeah. Yeah. So L1 will be 40 and yeah. uh, frequency will be 15 and cumulative frequency will be 14. Yeah. Right. So you yeah. have applied this formula. Yes. And uh, you are getting the value. Yeah. I got 41.2. 41.2. Uh, just a minute. 40, 41.2 are you are getting now? Okay, just a minute. N by 4 is how much? 15. 15 minus 29. Just a minute. <clears throat> Fifteen minus 20. Sir. Just a minute. 15 minus 25, then we will multiply it by 20. And divide it by. No, I found the mistake. You found the mistake, na? Okay. Yeah. Um, what is? I mistake? thought. No, in the previous question, um, uh, the CF, what you took the one like before, the. Mm -hmm. Ah, you okay, 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 okay. okay. Yeah. So you have taken uh, the cumulative frequency just in front of the frequency. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So you have to take a uh, frequency just above the frequency. Basically, we need to take the frequency just above the frequency. Community frequency that we need to take that should not be exactly uh, in front of the frequency. Yeah. So I hope now you got the mistake. So I hope you can do this question no. again and got the correct answer. No, sir. Uh, I did it like that. So I subtracted. Try. Yeah, I subtracted 14. You have sub subtracted 14. Yeah, from 15. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so finally you got the got your mistake, na? Uh, no. Oh. So you did it till this point, everything is correct? Uh, no, sir, you when you were saying the answer, you were like 15 minus 29, then I okay. said I have... Okay, yeah, okay. I have, all right. So, and n by n by n by four will be how much? It will 15. be fifteen. Yeah. From fifteen, we will reduce minus cumulative frequency. So cumulative frequency is how much? Fourteen. 14. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So fifteen minus fourteen, it will be one. Okay. Yeah. So one into we will multiply it by twenty. So twenty in the denominator and in the denominator we will have. In the denominator we will have fifteen. Right? Yeah. So 20 upon 15 will be 20 upon 15. We will have 
adding it with 40 we will get 41.33 you are getting q1 as 41.33 41.2 i think you got two okay. no i think i think uh, because i divided one by 15 first and i didn't multiply you didn't multiply it yeah i didn't multiply one and 20 first i just divided one by 15 before that so one divided by 15 and multiplying it with 20 still you will get 1.33 still you will get 1.33 now so you will have to add it with 40 it will be 41.33 so q1 will be 41.33 okay. right okay now proceeding with uh, proceeding to q calculation of q3 so for calculating q3 uh, to the <coughs> 3n upon 4. So 3n upon 4 basically means 45. 45 will fall in which class? 60, 60 to 80. 80. Correct. 60 to 80. So lower in class, lower, lower value will be L1 will be 60. And uh, 3n by 4, we have got 45. Minus cumulative frequency. Cumulative frequency will be 29. Yeah. So 45 minus 29 divided by divided by 20 correct 45 minus 29 divided by 20 multiply it with 20 16 and we will add 16 plus 60 so 76 are you getting q3 yes sir where is the mistake then 76 minus 41.33 and divide it by 2. So we should have, yeah. So I think the answer is incorrect this time. 17 point, it should be 17.33. By mistake, I think uh, we have uh, given the wrong answer. 14.33 is not the correct answer. Correct answer will be 17.33. Please make the uh, correction. Okay, you, you are not required to make any correction. Okay, all right. So, uh, this is correct, Alexander. Good, well done. Now, if they need to calculate coefficient of quartile deviation, I think coefficient of quartile deviation, you can also calculate that value as well. Yeah, okay. I, I got 40.97. Yeah, so it will be correct because uh, the answer in the question is incorrect. So, okay. maybe because of that, we are getting the incorrect coefficient. Uh, value as well. So, still, I would recommend that you try it one more time so that I don't know because most of the answer in the in the PowerPoint is correct. So this should be correct. Okay, let me let me check. I'll 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 tell you in the next class. Let me solve it. Okay. I'll discuss this question in the next class as well. Okay. So okay. this is it, uh, Alexander, for today's session. Thank you so much. Uh, this is it for. Uh, the economics part as well. So we will do the next class on Tuesday. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Okay, sir. Thank you. Goodbye.